you talk in the book about the level of degradation that mankind sunk to back in those days. And it's hard to fathom that kind of degradation, Ron. But as I say that, I am reminded in the Bible, it says there's coming another generation that's going to be as the days of Noah. Do you think we're there yet? I do think that we're seeing today what was seen back in Noah's day. It was not just the corruptness, but it's the absolute lack of concern about all things godly. And I think that we've witnessed that not just outside of the church, but I hate to say it, we're seeing it inside the church as well. And to me, what we're seeing is a massive blindness has descended upon the church, where Christians do not even know that they're not living Christian-like. And I think that uh, a lot of people have been deceived with the false gospel out there. The gospel that passes for the gospel in many churches is not the gospel handed down to the saints so long ago. You know, that shows itself not only in a uh, false sense of security in terms of salvation, But just look at our world today. Have you ever witnessed such degradation on a global basis as we have seen today? And have you ever witnessed a more callous disregard for all things godly than we're seeing today? Jen, I think that we're in Romans 1, especially in America. We're a right for judgment. And so it's a thing that that concerns me a great deal, especially for my children who are growing up here in America. Jen, you know, uh, Ron just ran across something that's uh, that I think exactly the same thing. The apathy in the church Mm -hmm. is a surefire sign of where we are on God's timetable and we see it around us. Every one of us should check ourselves to see how apathetic we are about what's happening in the world around us. And Mm -hmm. you you see what what is going on in the Middle East and and the barbarism that we see being displayed openly and people being drawn to it. If those aren't end time signs, I don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's also that verse in the New Testament that talks about how people will be thinking they're doing God's service to kill another person. Boy, I think that we're seeing that today on a major level. I agree. And we've always been at war. The scripture has taught us from the beginning that we are at war, but now we are seeing the war breaking out around us in physical locations. It's everywhere. (laughs) The things that are happening are growing and they're terrifying if we allow them to be that. If we look at them like you say, Jan, that these things must happen in order for the Lord to return. Then we can look at them as warriors going out to fight with a sense of joy in our heart. Ron Rhodes, do you feel that the Ark, Noah's Ark, will actually be discovered, perhaps, who knows, near future, even distant future, as a reminder that we are in that kind of a generation, or as a reminder that we may be in the last days? It's very possible that the Ark could be discovered, and certainly a great deal of money has been spent looking for it, and a number of the people looking for it happen to be people that I know personally, as I know that you know them as well. Uh, I would like to be able to see that before I pass from this earth personally. There is a danger, however, Jan, and that danger is simply this. If the ark is discovered, will there be people out there who will be tempted to worship it, like they do so many other religious icons out there? And so while on the one hand, I hope it is discovered because it would add tremendous punch in terms of the accuracy of the Bible, on the other hand, what will the response of people be in terms of uh, those who tend to worship things that they ought not worship? Well, the veneration of idols is something that uh, religions have embraced, and then some of us, of course, have exposed for how long. So that would definitely be, uh, I-, I think, a temptation. I agree with you. No, Ron, I never told you this, but um, I don't think I meant, I might have mentioned it to you, Jan, but I, when I was a little girl, uh, my father received a package in the mail, and it was from John Warwick Montgomery, and he had been, he had just been on an expedition to Mount Ararat. Really? And in it was a piece of gopher wood that was soaked in pitch, a very old piece of wood. And my father, I remember my father handing it to me and saying, do you want to touch a piece of Noah's Ark? Mm. I remember the wood was black and it was very brittle. Now, I'm not saying that it was ex- it was Noah's Ark. I'm saying that's what Dr. Montgomery claimed. They had drilled down into the ice and come up with this piece of wood. So something is there. There are a lot of anecdotal stories of people around the area, but I'm with you. I don't think that it's something necessarily that we need in Christianity, and there's always the danger that you know people can take it and run with it in the wrong direction. Yeah, one thing is for certain is that our faith does not depend upon that. Our 
faith hinges on the Word of God and as an absolute communication from Him, but we've got more than ample historic testimony that tells us that we've got is, in fact, the Word of God. So we don't need it, but it would be super cool to find it. And, you know, there's really one fascinating thing I, I love about the Ark, and that is there is a number called God's number. It's Phi, and it's, I learned about this since I teach art, and it's 1.6180, and it goes on. This number can be found all throughout the creations of God. It can be found in the pine cone. It can be found in leaves on the branches. It can be found in Noah's Ark. So God built Noah's Ark based on this numerical calculation, just like the Ark of the Covenant mm. was built on this numerical calculation. So God is so amazing mm. and so incredible, and there is scientific evidence of what he does.